Frank, wh whereabouts in Italy do you come from? What part of I Italy? I come from Sicily, Provincia Catania, which is a well-known. Yeah. Um, not a small town, a town of about 14,000 people. I lost a mum and dad when I was seven years of age. I was an orphanage. I lived with my grandparents. My mother died, died in 1938. And my father died in 1939 in November. The appendix up at Bell Reynolds in New South Wales because they didn't know what the appendix was. I was there. I was, uh, I was still in Italy when he died. And um, that's why I went to live with the grandparents. And then when the, um, my father passed away, they wanted to split us up. You know, one go to one grandparents and one go to the other, but the other, my, on my mother's side, she, she didn't want nothing to do with us. So we grew up with the, uh, on the father's side. I loved school, but unfortunately I couldn't go to school. I just started working at 12 years of age, and Mussolini used to write the letter, say, look, if you don't send me to school, you're going to be fine. And so I got to the school for one week, and then I don't go for another five or six weeks, sort of thing, you know. When I come to Australia in July 1949, I was disappointed because when I left Sicily, we had the water, we had the electricity. Here, we're living in the country and had a water tank and no electricity. We had a candle. You know, once it get dark, you can't do nothing. For cooking, we had a tomato steak, a steak tomatoes every day because we haven't had a stove. We had two bricks with pieces of steel across and a hot plate. And that's what we're doing now. Our toast, our cooking our steak and whatever. That was it in. That for the first six months. But sometime it God helps you. I started working with a, an Australian lady and the husband had two kids. Tom Hunter was his name. And they treat me like a son. The lady, soon we finish our meal, she get the book out, Frank, read the book she teach me in English. Because I've been 17 years of age, right? When I got to Australia, I was confused. I don't know if I were hearing English words or dialect words because you know, the Italians so many dialects and been living in, in one town all the time. I didn't know what they were talking, if they were talking English or a dialect. And after that, there was some Calabria, some from Abruzzo, some from Sicily, some from north of Italy. You know, that's a... Uh, my... But when I met these people, Tom Hunt and his wife and the kids, that's sort of my life has started to improve. I want to go back to Italy. I got married in 1956. We had two kids, one in born in 57 and the other born in 58. So that was a bit uh, struggling. And for a period of time, I had two jobs. I was working at Gas and Fuel full time, like 7.30 to quarter to past four. And then I got a venture bus in Brighton. And they just drive the bus to go to bring the people from the cinemas, 11 o'clock at night, sort of thing. When I come to Melbourne, we bought this place in, well, we're living in Richmond for a while. And when we bought a house in Caulfield, they had the five bedrooms. <laughs> and it was 13 people, or like three people in each bedroom, you know. We had, they were paying, because we paid 3,200 pound for the house. They had two kitchen, five bedrooms, you know. And I say, I'll live it up a little bit. You know, like go out dancing and stuff like that. And then when I got married, I decided to go back on the farm. My uncle, when they sponsored me to come to Australia, he came here in 1921. He went to Italy and I looked after his farm for 12 months. In the meantime, my son was born there in Mildura. And then she was praying for the second one, so we come to Melbourne at 57. 
I went to the Gesson Field in St Gilda Road and the supervisor, as soon as he saw me, he said, Frank, you want your job back? He said, oh, yeah. He said, you can start tomorrow. And I started working on the Gesson Field. I started as a labour again. Then I had my driving licence. I got endorsed driving licence. And after a while, he said, no, you're too good to be a driver. So I did a welding course. And... Um, after the Weldon course, he said, now, Frank, we want you to be, go to school, get your supervisor certificate so you can become a supervisor. So I went to Tekken school for two years. I got my supervisional certificate and I was classified as a supervisor in 1974 until 1993 when I took the package. What was Melbourne like for migrants in the 1950s and 60s? When I did my supervision course, the engineer put a special request for me to go to Box Hill. When I went to Box Hill, I knew why. Because a lot of new Australians, especially Italians, living in Lilydale, and they speak a very little English. So it was help him to do uh, reports and accidents and stuff like that. I pay my sponsor, pay myself. It cost me 139 pounds to come to Australia. That's a pay. My, my uncle paid for me, and I had to pay him back when I worked. Where the others come in, the ten dollar, ten pounds, you know, assistance by immigrants. They had to spend two years here. Otherwise, they had to pay back the expenses after two years. And what I was surprised when those people who was coming to Australia, they used to put a train on next door to the port to the sheep, they straight from the boat onto the train, straight to Bonagila. And then from there, they separate the wife and the husband, not for, not for just because accommodation problems. And their husband would go to the cities, some of the husband and I go to Adelaide, to Melbourne. As soon as they find accommodation for their wife or whatever, then they, their wife, they can enjoy their husband. If you want to take a girl out, you had to go there and sign a book that you're taking so-and-so out. When you bring her back, you sign the book again. And not just to, for, just even to work like the, the bus driver might go and pick up 10 ladies to pick peas. You had to put 10 names, the people who take them out, make sure you bring the same girls back. I had a little farm up in Cranbourne South. I sold that. And with the money, I was going to buy two houses in Frankston. But then the time they changed the um, government, immediately we got in, and he can buy one house. Because the interest went up 12%, if you remember the thing. The house that we bought was in Hill, uh, Hills, Heather Hill Road. And later on, as I said, I've been very active, man. I built three units on the block, apart from the house. So I built three units. And that keep me going because after a while we, we, we rent the units and one year I had to trouble one of the tenants so I'll sell the units right because of, and the units are paid for the other two it cost me $68,000 to build the three units and the first one I'll sell for 64000 I worked always trying to Giving my wife, my kids a better life and that, you know. I got married the second time. We never had a club in Frankston, like a pension club. So I uh, always done the community work with other people. Anyway, when we come back from the honeymoon, they had a meeting and I was nominated president of the Italian Senior Citizens Club of Frankston. I accept that. Then we um, we write and constitute to sort our need of Frankston and that. And then we had a general meeting and the state as a president. And I was there president for 19 years. I did a lot of voluntary work for the, uh, they used to call the Michael Resource Centre, now the New Hope Foundation and I help people as much as I can. But it seems like that was something that you did from very early on, even when you were working 
in Box Hill. Yeah. You were helping people back then. Yeah, it's always, as I said, it's always helping people in different ways, you know, because uh, I wasn't smarter, but I was, I've been involved in a lot of things. Um, now, I'm a little bit handicapped, and I'll explain why. Since I moved to this place here, I've met a lot of people. Italian especially, and they still do like things they would do it in the past in Italy. And I lost all that. And I start to, after time, I said, what are they talking about? Because they're talking about the past in Italy. And I can't remember much <laughs> because I was, was dealing with the Australians all the time in English because, you know, my job will let to me speak Italian, let us speak English, so okay. everybody can understand what I'm talking about and everything. And if they ask me for help, I'm only too pleased to help them. You know where the, um, the multicultural centre in High Street? Mm -hmm. Now, I start that. Um, I approach, um, what's the member of parliament, Harkness. I said, why we haven't got a multicultural they said a good idea, Frank. So we got together, Anastasia was there, we had a meeting, and uh, we got, uh, I think it was $10,000, a grant, to um, have those meetings and discuss. And now we had to pick locations, you know, where this thing we can build this uh, ethnic community thing. And even at the, yes, Peninsula Centre was mentioned. So anyway, at the end of the all they did the uh, research and everything, they decided to take High Street because it was close to the transport, close to the station. Next there was a shop. I put a motion. They would go ahead with the thing. And uh, Anastasia seconded it. And the people who were at the meeting, they all agreed to it. So how can it supply the council for the because the property belonged to the uh, St. Broad with St. Lawrence. We got $200,000 grant from the government to do some alteration to the house. And so then when it was completed, we decided, you know, we take, we still go there every Friday afternoon. And I think I got a lot of other community people there. But if it hadn't been for me, they wouldn't be there. Now. They wouldn't be there. So that, that's a... That's a I'm proud of that because I started and with the help Harkin, it's always there was a member of parliament for Frankston, a Labor member for Frankston of the days. When did the club start? Tony Aston and his wife, he said, we're going to start a pension club in Frankston. And Frank the Blast was in charge of Corset. He said he needed 200 signatures, right? So they went round to the Italian family and they got the signatures. He had to get at least 200 signatures. They got the 200 signatures. And that's when they had the first meeting. And because by that time I got married, which is in, in August 94, they waited until we come back, Katharina and I, and we had our first meeting at the Mechanical Hall. Then I got a letter from the council they were rear with rent. I said, what's this rent? He said, we don't pay rent. He said, oh, yeah, you do. And I said, but I haven't been told. So anyway, I was proud to make spatula and we were paying, charging us $9 an hour. And the, over 55 in Beach Street, they had a, seven days a week, they were paying no rent. I said, that's a discrimination. And I wrote an article in the paper about that. And then the council started to come on our side a little bit. They cut it down $4 an hour. We moved to Beach Street. And then we put a proposal if we can go every one day a week in Beach Street next door because the other room was getting smaller. And I said, no. We built this thing, we worked on it. Anyway, they, wouldn't, they shut the doors 
Peter Fitchett and Mike Conroy, they had to mention names. He said they took us to Bruce Park. And we worked hard. We built a uh, bocce court, which is the only bocce court in Frankston, I'm right. No other place in Frankston I got bocce. A bowling, yes, but not bocce. How many members did you have? Oh, at that time we had about 140, 150, something, you know. But not just Italian, we had the Greeks, we had the Croatian, we had, uh, according to our secretary, we about 10 different nationalities. Everybody can join that club. We just like to maintain the, the Italian culture, that's all. We did a lot of work. We bought indoor mats to play bowls. We bought a billiard table, all through the council approval. And I, um, but we had to fight for it because the council was against those things. And there was a temporary committee and I was nominated president and Bianca was nominated secretary, plus all the other people. And then we write the constitution with the help of Frank de Blas because the Surya need. And our first official meeting was in 19, in November. 1994, and there was select a committee, like which I was president, being a president, and, and that we go on from there. And uh, I've been sort of always want to do things, you know. And um, we had to move from uh, uh, mechanical hall because we had the problem of parking. When I approached the council for parking, the only can give me seven spots. Well, seven spots weren't enough because the people who used to park their car along the street there and go to the station, and we couldn't get a parking anywhere. So we got a problem. That's why from now we moved it to Beach Street. Beach Street, we went to do things. It was enough, not a big enough to make these uh, things. That's when I approached the the Beach Street the Senior Club. That's the Max Badgley got involved in that. And they couldn't do it. And the thing I wanted to do, we couldn't do it anyway because we had no limited. And Bruce Parker was a suitor, so we had the condition that we can build a bocce court. We bought a billiard table. We bought an indoor bowling mat. Uh, we bought a barbecue. We've we done all the things through hard work, uh, activities. Uh, we used to do our own uh, cooking, or not cooking, or serving the meals. and Anyway, trying to raise money, barbecues and raffles and stuff like that. When we built the uh, bocce court, the cost of $7,500. The government, the state government, the sports regulation pays 50%, we pay 25%, and the council pay 28%, 25%. We build the, um, we bought the indoor mats, cost $1,100 each. Uh, We put a grant application to the state government and we got the money for them to buy that. We bought a billiard, also through grants and money that we raise ourselves. I like to entertain people and they're not just playing cards, they do different things, you know. That's why I built a bocce court so people can buy bocce. Uh, Bowling, indoor bowling. I mean, nobody knew what was in. We have created those things. So that that made me sort of proud. And the people used to say to me, Frank, if you go, the club closed down. And for 19 years, when I moved here, I said, if somebody comes, the club will keep you going, otherwise we would have to close it. And thank God for Dominic Biviani. He said, Frank, if you give me a hand or help me where I need, I'll take it on. And that's what happened. Frank Biviana, Dominic Biviana did the thing. And he's, this is his second year now, so the club is still going on. 21 years. In August, we were 21 years. People like to enjoy themselves, but when they come to do the little, very hard to find the people that, you know, that do their little bit.
same as some take my position. Nobody went, no, Frank, you're doing a good job, you know, we love what you're doing. I never said that people from front of me said what I'm doing wrong. I haven't done nothing wrong. That's just impossible. You always do something wrong. But nobody complained. They were very happy what I was doing. And I started playing bowls in 1997, and I enjoyed it. Now, I played for nearly 11 years. And then the uh, golf club decided to get enough of us, so they closed the, the greens down, and I moved it to Yamala Park, and I was there ever since. Now, here, uh, when I come here, I transfer from uh, Yamala Park to Burton Park, and we play here every Monday. We've got another mob that come from uh, Cumberland, which is another retired village down Wilders Hill. Saturday, I play at Burton Park, or other occasion has happened. That's, uh, I enjoy that. I knew this place exist because we got invited when they started this place in the year 2000. So we knew this place is here and always lot to stay in here. And my wife, she loves too, but the reason we didn't board it because we don't want to leave Frankston. But when she passed away in 2013, my brother used to live in Mount Waverley and my son lived in Willisville. So this for me was a central and I like the prize. When I came here, as I said, I've been involved with a lot of things. I started involving with people here, you know, like the dance, bowling and other activities, you know. I enjoy that, I enjoy companies. I go out and mix with people now my routine, daily routine, so she get up at normal, have my breakfast, I do a walk, and then, and then if I got appointments, I will tell my appointment, the appointment sometime of grand pay bowls, I go to the club because I'm involved with three clubs now, in Clayton, and one in Clarinda, and here. So uh, always I got something on, either playing cards or outings. Um, but to my money, I'll make it. So Saturday, I'll go and play bowls. Then I'll come here Saturday night. I'll go down the bars up at five o'clock. So we have a drinks with the boys and have a take like that. And then one black here. In, in, sorry, in charge. You take the orders, maybe a pizza night or whatever. That's a Saturday night, every Saturday night. And you put the orders in, I bring the orders, so we'll eat our food, we'll have a chat, and then everybody go to their things. Um, I go a lot, of, I do a lot of dancing. A lot of clubs, they got daytime dancing. Um, just to give an example, last 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 month, I had four night, four days running. Tuesday at the club, we had our anniversary, and then we had a fresh azura, which it was a following Tuesday, and then a, a Clayton, a Wednesday, and a Sunday back a Clayton again. So four, <laughs> you know, so, busy man. <laughs> well, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying it. Now I feel good. Um, that's about basic my uh, my life, you know. I mix with people a lot. I mix with people.